You know, one, one of the key industries that has been somehow affected and targeted for all this uh, digital transformation disruption has been financial services. Uh, and at the same time, there was the discussion how much of the phenomenon of the super apps in Asia Pacific, like WeChat, so creating a super app that would provide so many use cases would eventually emerge in Latin America, or it was a different story. So we don't know yet, but the emergence of some of the extended platforms like Mercado Libre, Mercado Pago, Mercado Envío, it's an expression on how many um, consumer frictions some of these new fintechs are trying to solve. Um, and therefore, I, I do believe that the extension of this offering into a true solution providers to many of these friction points that consumers would have in Latin America from financial inclusion to the broad offering of a marketplace and to the payments and lending solution uh, would be one. That, that's at the regional level. Another one would be um, a Chilean bank, BCI, with a match. This is their disruptive innovation. That is a traditional P2P a payment platform, but really now extending into new use cases in a very aggressive and successful way. So I would say that these um, applications trying to focus in very um, untouched friction points for consumers that are emerging both in terms of scale and f uh, functionalities and consumer acceptance are probably the, the news for this year in Latin America. I think that we, we need to put this in perspective. First, from the broader industry analysis, there are many, many traditional industries that have not been creating value for many years, from airlines to steel uh, companies and some industrial. So we, we, we shouldn't be too, let's say, um, focused on some of the emergence of companies like FinTech that are creating true business, new business models um, and we need to remember that value creation is somehow fostered or um, grounded in two key dimensions. One is profitability, the second one is growth. And if we see that for 25 years, maybe in the first 20 years, Amazon has not created, let's say, value in terms of profitability, but yes, value that might explain the market cap that they have because of growth and sustained growth, we need to be, I think, understanding that some of the fintech in Latin America, the case of New Bank with more than 10 billion in market cap, the case of Mercado Libre with more than 30 billion of, of market cap are a reflection that the market it is expecting them to provide that sense of growth and gradually moving into profitability. But uh, when you are trying to solve so many problems, while you are able to demonstrate consumer acceptance and sustained growth, I wouldn't be that, let's say, concerned regarding the lack of profitability because we are truly at early stages of this big transformation that fintech are, are providing. I, I do believe it, it will. And, and in a sense, many people now is talking about because of this disruption and the acceleration of the transformation, the, what will be the, the future of work, the future of the nature of work and labor. And there has been many research regarding how uh, difficult and challenging would be with the loss of jobs and many dimensions. We tend to have a more positive view on this one. In a sense, today, from all the, let's say, incoming class to elementary schools, those pupils going in, into elementary schools in the region, when they graduated from high school, so 12 years program, 65% um, of those would be working in jobs that do not exist today. So the sense of new um, jobs and new activities that will be created, it's creating a sense of opportunity on, on that. However, yes, there is a sense of how the adoption would be supporting these opportunities. And we've seen those slides where you see how many years took for TB and mobile and WeChat to really get 100 million users. And that um, uh, level of acceptance will continue to accelerate. And many of the problems that this uh, would bring would be somehow solved and addressed by many of the disruptions that new technologies, even 
technologies that we don't know yet are going to solve. So in a sense that adoption will continue to accelerate new, maybe today unforeseen solutions through new technologies would solve some of these problems and more opportunities will be created so that people will be solving many of the, let's say, traditional frictions that we have. And one final comment, given maybe the recent events in Chile, where it's not only about uh, adoption of new use cases for cellular applications and others, it's what will be the responsibility of innovation to really solve some of the heart of the matter issues in our societies, like inequality, access to healthcare. It's not only access to a bank, but access to healthcare or to pension reforms. I think we need to acknowledge that institutions, companies should have a more uh, active role in using innovation and even disruptive innovation to uh, try to address many of the problems that maybe the traditional political systems or, uh, or, or associations have not find, found yet the, the way to solve it. So I'm positive on the role uh, that those um, technologies and organizations should be having to solve and address so, those issues.